Welcome to Innovation Guelph Presents Toolkit Tuesday. I'm Mickey Campo, the Director of Community Growth uh, with Innovation Guelph, and I'm really happy to be here with all of you today. Uh, I'd like to first welcome our two wonderful American Sign Language interpreters, whose time today is graciously provided in kind by SLEO Canada, Samantha and Jeanette. So thank you both for joining us and thank you to SLEO. Uh, while I'm at it, I would also like to thank our sponsors, Ernst & Young, Reese Informatica, Invest in Guelph, and BDO. We're so very grateful for their support. And before beginning the session, I would also like to give recognition to the land that Guelph is on. We acknowledge that many others here today may be on different territory, so we invite and encourage each of you to give recognition to the land you occupy today and every day. As we gather for today's event, we are reminded that Guelph is situated on treaty land that is steeped in rich Indigenous history and home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis people today. As an organization based in Guelph, we have a responsibility for the stewardship of the land in which we live and work. And today we acknowledge the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation of the Anishinaabek peoples on whose traditional territory we are meeting on. Today's webinar is called Barcodes and Beyond, helping startups get their products to market with GS1 Canada. And joining us today are members of their community engagement team, Linda Antoniadis and Alain Picard. We, um, before I introduce both Al uh, Alain and Linda to you, um, some of you here are new to Innovation Guelph. So I'd like just to do a really quick background uh, Innovation Guelph is one of 17 regional innovation centers located here in Ontario. And while we are here in Guelph, we actually serve the entire region of Southern Ontario and have a national program. So this means that while most of our clients are relatively close by, we do have clients in BC, all the way to Nova Scotia and all throughout Ontario. And we work with our clients supporting them through multiple stages of business growth from startup to scale up with lots of mentorship programs, workshops, networking opportunities, and connections. But I think that's enough about us today. Um, you're here uh, to hear from our expert presenters, Linda Antoniadis and Alain Picard. So uh, Linda is the Senior Manager of Community Engagement for GS1 Canada. GS1 Canada is a not-for-profit organization that is part of a larger global GS1. The world's leading supply chain standards organization, and she is focused on educating small businesses to help them get their product to market efficiently to allow them to focus on growing their business. She works closely with industry partners, government agencies, and associations, assisting them with their community engagement efforts. And with Linda here today is Alain Picard, and Alain uh, recently joined GS1 Canada as an advisor on the community engagement team with Linda. This new division was created in early 2022 with the main objective of supporting small businesses and entrepreneurs in getting their products and market, uh, sorry, their products to market uh, quickly and efficiently. He works closely with trade associations and educational institutions in an effort to support and educate and familiarize members with the GS1 Global Standard and to minimize any startup and scale up hurdles along the way. So I feel we're in excellent hands. Uh, and should you have any questions during the presentation, of course, please use the Q&A feature below. And Adelaide will monitor and try to ask your questions at the right minute uh, when uh, you, the opportunity arises, or there will be a little bit of time at the end of the presentation for a dedicated Q&A uh, session if you wanted to hold on to your questions until the end. But anyhow, I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to hand things over to Linda and Alain. Um, so feel free to start sharing your screen, uh, Linda, and you can take it away. Okay, so I am just in the process of sharing my screen. I know I just had that option up. Apologies. Guys, hold on one second. Let me just let me just pull this up here. Share screen. Here we go. Okay. Let me know when you can see it. All good. Okay. Excellent. 
so thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, again, I'm Linda Antoniades. I'm joined by my colleague, Alain Picard. And today we're going to walk you through a presentation um, that really talks about uh, everything you need to know to get your product to market. When you're ready to sell your products, you want to make sure you've got barcodes, images, and identification set. You want to be aware of other tools and resources available to help you manage and grow your business. And of course, as mentioned, we've allocated time at the end of the presentation for questions, so I hope uh, you'll keep them uh, uh, or post them in the chat, and we're really looking forward to engaging with you at the uh, end of the presentation. Um, okay, so to get started, uh, we want to share a video that really talks about who we are and what we do. Who is GS1 Canada? GS1 Canada helps Canadian businesses succeed every day and everywhere around the globe. GS1 is a not-for-profit organization that develops, implements, and manages supply chain standards in multiple industries and in more than 150 countries. We provide industry with the tools, trust, and confidence they need to achieve business goals. The GS1 system of standards are built on four core principles, enabling industry to identify, capture, share, and use perpetually cleansed, accurate, and trusted product information. Our suite of solutions allow trading partners to speak to one another using one powerful global language of business. In the healthcare and pharmacy sector, GS1 standards help enable patient safety and improve the quality and efficiency of the healthcare system. Food service and grocery trading partners use GS1 global standards and registries to share brand certified product, marketing, and nutritional information and images. This enhances consumers' safety and confidence in the food they eat and in the stores they shop at. Today, organizations recognize that effective data management tools are critical for business success. Canadian retailers are collaborating with their general merchandise and hard lines trading partners on the use of GS1 Canada product data management services to get products onto shelves and into consumers' hands faster. These tools also enhance product recall processes and improve marketing and advertising capabilities. Global Standards trusted data from an organization that is constantly innovating. Canadian business runs on GS1 services and business solutions. So to summarize, GS1 is a global neutral not-for-profit organization with member organizations in 116 countries we create a common language of business around the world. Barcodes are used across 20 industry sectors serving more than 2 million businesses and over 6 billion GS1 barcodes are scanned and read every day. In addition to developing industry standards for business around the world, we recognize small businesses are the backbone of the Canadian economy and the heart of our communities. That's why GS1 Canada, with the support of our community, government partners, board members, and extended network is committed to supporting Canadian small business. It's been nearly 50 years since the first barcode was scanned, and we are excited that throughout the year, we'll be able to share information about the future of the barcode, including a global transition to 2D barcodes that will be coming in the next few years. We've just released our new small business podcast series called Barcodes and Beyond. We hope you'll tune in to hear how small business owners and industry experts across the country are sharing insights, experience, and expertise on everything small business. They're available wherever you get your podcasts and also on our website. And with funding through the Government of Canada's Agri-Assurance Program, GS1 Canada developed a trade readiness certification program that's, that is available for Canadian small businesses in food products. The program educates small businesses on how to meet trading partner requirements across grocery and food service channels and provides guidance and resources through product listing pro process. This program is also available to all GS1 Canada subscribers. We're really here to listen and help support business in any way that we can. So let's 
take a look at product certifi uh, product identification. As a small business owner, it is so important to ensure your product is uniquely identified by your customer, and so it's not confused by other uh, products. If a product is not identified correctly, supply chain issues happen, such as barcodes that might not be scannable at point of sale. Have you ever ordered a product online and received something different than what you expected? I know I have. When you sell your products online or in a retail store, you wanna build consumer confidence and trust in your brand and in your products. This is where GS1 standards can help. Let's take a quick look at a video to see why product identification is so important. Think about the way consumers shop today. Sure, we still go to physical stores, but we also search, compare, and buy online through our smartphones, laptops, and tablets. Selection used to be limited to what we could physically find and buy. Now we have the world at our fingertips. But how does Kelly know that what she's finding in her online search is really what she's looking for? And how can Sweetie Pie Brands and Darcy's make sure that their products are discoverable and accurately represented across all channels? The times may have changed, but the answer remains the same. Unique identification through the use of GS1 standards. In the physical world, the number used in a UPC barcode actually represents a global trade item number, or GTIN, that uniquely identifies that item all around the world. With this kind of unique identification, trading partners can exchange information automatically and accurately throughout the supply chain and with their consumers. In today's omni-channel world, products appear on physical and digital shelves, but a product's digital data is not always what it should be. Search engines are dealing with product data that is not structured consistently, so Kelly gets different results depending on how and where she searches. There is no way for search engines to find the right products each and every time, let alone look for duplicates or flag incorrect information. Some products appear when others don't, and even when Kelly gets to the right product, the quality of the information can be incorrect, incomplete, or irrelevant. It's a hassle for consumers like Kelly, and it's a liability for brand owners and retailers. Proprietary numbering systems confuse matters even further. Without a standardized global system, the same identification number can yield very different results. It seems complicated, but there's a simple solution. Encoding a global trade item number and product data into product web pages. With products identified in a standardized way, search engines can more easily find the right product with the right information attached to it. Consumers get robust, accurate search results, and they know exactly what they are comparing as they shop. They have access to more detailed product information, where to buy based on their location, precise product comparisons, and real-time social media reviews through the linking of relevant data. Sweetie Pie Brands and Darcy's can be more confident that their products will appear in the right consumer searches with the right information, making them as appealing online as they are in the store. The use of GS1 standards revolutionized the retail world with the barcode more than 40 years ago. Now's the time to take unique GS1 identification and attributes online and ensure the best omni-channel shopping experience for consumers like Kelly. So you can see that accurate product identification results in increased customer satisfaction and trust, faster product listing, higher purchase frequency, and accurate product fulfillment. Now that we've discussed why product identification is important, let's further your understanding of product identification. The GS1 standard that is used to identify products is called the Global Trade Item Number, or GETAN, also commonly referred to as a barcode. It is a unique identification number, and it is important to assign properly at the start of your journey. Because GETANs are assigned permanently to products, they can't be reused or reassigned to other products. It is so important to get it right from the start. You're going to hear me say this several times throughout this presentation. Uh, we, will, we will get in a little deeper into some of the other elements, but the GETAN is a one-time thing. You need to get it right from the start. Um, barcodes are symbols that can be scanned um, 
uh, electronically, and they play a key role in the supply chain, enabling trading partners like retailers and manufacturers to automatically identify and track them. We provide various types of barcodes to manage different business processes. And on this page, you can see some of the most common barcodes at point of sale. When you become a GS1 Canada subscriber, you will have access to a tool called Manage My Jeetons. This tool helps you generate different types of barcodes that you need for your products. So you don't need to know which one it, it, you need in advance, but really the UPCA barcode is the most commonly used barcode. Now we're going to review why each product needs a unique Jeetan. Let's look at an example of bags of tea. These products have the same Jeetan, even though they have two different flavors of tea. The same product with two or more different variants is considered two or more different products, and therefore they each need a different Jeetan. They can't share the same one. Sharing the same Jeetan can cause errors in search results or even worse, the wrong product being ordered and delivered to the customer. This presents a real challenge for sellers and consumers as sellers won't be able to sell their products because consumers can't find them. Just gonna, and so you can see here, they need separate Jeetons. I'll just sort of realize that I missed that uh, transition. Uh, something that small owners must think about is how many barcodes do you need? Remember, when every product requires a unique barcode, and once you assign a permanent barcode, it's a pretty important stage of, the step, of this process. It can be complicated, but we have a tool on our site that helps you estimate based on a number of factors. For example, you can see here, uh, you know, if you've got 100 millimeter and 200 milliliter bottles, you've got different flavors. Uh, the, the calculator will, will tell you what you need. Another thing to keep in mind when you're thinking about how many barcodes you need is how many new products do you think you will, look, you will be looking at in the future? Are you thinking about a special pack for, a, for seasonality? Are you thinking about introducing a new flavor? If you are, it might be um, helpful to, to think about that and add that into the calculator when you're estimating the number of barcodes that you'll need. And then product content is the text, images, and other information that a brand owner or retailer uses to describe an item. It helps consumers understand what they're buying. Uh, the type of product information you need to share really depends on the sales channel, but the basics are often the same. And I'll just sort of throw up the different, uh, the different um, features and, and information that you'll need. Um, and really one of the important features is businesses underestimate the importance of accurate product content. You know, you share this information in so many places as a small business and you wanna make sure that it's consistent and accurate no matter who you're sharing it with, whether it's internally on your own personal website or externally with an online marketplace or a retailer. While you want to differentiate your product from others, buyers want to compare specific attributes. So supplying similar product content is key. Oh, and there's that final one there. So why do you need a GS1 barcode? There are so many different reasons. Some of you might be in the process of selling to retailers, and so you've been asked to make sure that you've got a GS1 barcode. Or if you're planning on selling to retailers in the future and you're in the process of finalizing packaging, you're gonna wanna include a barcode just in case you're gonna sell it in the next few months. You never know how quickly your business will grow. Are you thinking of selling on an online marketplace? Amazon requires that manufacturers have a GS1 Canada barcode in order to sell their products online. And recently Google has implemented recommendations to use bar GS1 barcodes as it improves the customer experience. Regulations also play a role. You might need a barcode due to local regulations and particularly if you're making a food product or making product claims. And GS1 is the only provider of GS1 Jeetons and barcodes and are recognized around the world. So when you're ready to export your products, you already have the barcodes you need. And with a GS1 barcode, you don't have to worry about the origin or authenticity or the chance that someone else is using your barcode. This is a problem that can be costly, both from a time and a financial perspective. 
Another important uh, part of getting your products to market is has to do with sales channels. We're going to review the different sales channels and some of the benefits, uh, pros and cons of using those different channels. Whether your main sales channel is physical, retail, store, or an e-commerce website, you need to identify which is the most profitable depending on your strategy. Knowing what the different options are and which one would work best for your business is a key decision small business owners would really need to consider. Making the right choices will help you boost your sales and create a seamless customer journey. Let's explore some of those channels. A physical channel is a three-dimensional world, which almost seems secondary these days because everything seems to be online. Um, and they really are a perfect place where customers can touch and feel your product. They can also meet you as a founder, learn about your story, and in addition, get a demo of the product and learn the features and benefits. And lastly, there's a two-way communication in a retail store where you can really engage in a, in a meaningful way. We can all agree, however, that one of the best places for your business is online. But before you start building that base of customers, you need to figure out where you want to sell your products. There are so many options these days, uh, which is wonderful, uh, but it also creates a need to really understand and identify where do you need to be? We know as a small business, you have limited resources. And so making those decisions can often feel overwhelming. We just wanted to share a few little pros and cons around uh, what benefits an online marketplace provides. Um, it really does, um, it, you know, it's hard to beat because they have such a significant um, reach, but success isn't always 100% guaranteed. However, if you manage it properly and by following guidelines, it can be a lucrative way to grow your business. Some of the advantages are that existing traffic, standardized product setup and templates, fewer initial financial risks and low setup costs. But there are disadvantages because you're competing with other organizations. There might be fees to list your product, lack of differentiating um, product brand due to template structures, and you typically don't own the, the customer. And so uh, some online marketplaces restrict you from knowing who's purchased that. And those are important details uh, as you grow your business. Um, how you set up your product impacts whether your product is visible in common search criteria as well. So those are some of the things to consider uh, with online marketplaces. An e-commerce website allows shoppers to quickly and easily find what they're looking for, and the experience can be personalized from a trusted retailer, making it a better shopping experience. With the right strategy, including partners to help you build your e-commerce website, uh, small business owners can gain a lot by having your own uh, website, especially lowering the cost per sale. Um, but more, more importantly, profit from your website won't just be realized in sales. The website drives trust, consumer awareness, encourages loyalty and retention, and will work to push sales across other existing platforms. So some of the advantages are it's easy to collect customer data for marketing campaigns, which is so important. Uh, you have complete control over the functionality design, and it allows you to build your brand. Uh, but again, there's a lot of time and effort required to build that traffic. It can be difficult to get your products and search results, and it does take cost, um, time and money to build and maintain your website. Another important element to consider in getting products to market is a product pitch. We're going to learn what it is, why it's important, and what tips that you might need to, to uh, get engaged in a product pitch. And, and you may all be very aware, or some of you may have already engaged in product pitches, but it is so important that we want to make sure we're reminding you or hopefully giving you some tips that maybe you haven't been aware of. Um, because regardless of the product, your goal is to differentiate your product from competition. Convince customers your product is worthy of being purchased or convince that retailer that they need to carry your product on their store shelves. There are many ways to do that, including making your packaging stand out, outlining convenience, and telling a compelling story of your product, to name a few. Product pitches help build a connection with customers and retail buyers. They offer a compelling story and differentiate your product. Delivering a memorable product pitch will benefit your business by getting your brand noticed, building connections, 
increasing listings and helping you grow revenues by increasing exposure in the marketplace. Because a product pitch is one of the most essential pieces of your sales process, you really wanna spend time getting it right. And really the pitch is your, um, your brand statement, it's your business card, it's your company persona, all briefly, uh, all rolled into a brief high quality presentation. Uh, you know, again, you've probably been through this process, but we want to remind you because we hear about this, not just from the small businesses who are making these product pitches, but also from the retailers who are hearing them. And the things that come up again and again are making sure you've done this, you've practiced it, but that you also have the elements of of, of a, a robust and uh, an eff effective and efficient product pitch, including introduction, which is you, who you are, why you're there. Um, a product pitch um, is uh, sort of the 60 second intro. Uh, it really does summarize something that is your story. Um, you want to explain to the audience clearly in the simplest terms what the problem is that your product solves, what, your, what it does, how it works, and what the features and benefits are. Uh, you know, a great idea is incorporating a demonstration, whether it's in a video or it's uh, some other form of multimedia. It's a great way to visually share um, and illustrate how, what your product is and how it does. And, you know, sometimes it's, uh, it can be one of the most crucial parts of, of, of the pitch. Um, Q&A, once the pitch is over, is really where the unstructured part of the conversation happens and potentially one of the most important. You'll be asked about details about your background, your sales, your business, your history, and all of the numbers. Retail buyers are looking for holes in your pitch. They want to know how profitable the product is. Is it a fit for their store? You want to be prepared to negotiate and always know your numbers. Make sure you're confident, well rehearsed, and concisely communicate your pitch. Um, and finally, closing the sale. You've made your product pitch. Now it's time to close the sale. Um, take the lead and use open ended questions like, What shelf space do you think this would be best on? How many do you want? When do we get started? Every product pitch should end with a call to action. Even if the customer or buyer isn't ready to complete the sale, be sure to keep them on the journey by suggesting a follow-up meeting or a trial period. And if they're not interested, you can do a test maybe in some of their markets. It gets you a trial, it shows them you're open uh, to work with them, and it can result in a really great um, opportunity to, to build that relationship. Another really important part of selling products in Canada is understanding the Canadian regulatory requirements you need to sell your product. This includes understanding what Canadian business regulations are, why they're important, and the risks associated with non-compliance. You also wanna know industry-specific regulations for the most highly regulated businesses, which are food, healthcare, pharmacy, general merchandise, and cannabis. And finally, you really need to understand packaging and label requirements to comply with Canadian regulations for food and consumer goods. Whether you're just starting or growing your business in Canada, you need to be aware of regulations for small business. Failure to comply with regulations can result in penalties, and penalties are different for every regulation, <clears throat> but some of them are quite hefty. We highly encourage you to take the time to familiarize yourself with relevant regulations for your small business, as well as acquaint yourself with associations, Innovation Guelph and regulatory or organizations that can also provide support on this important topic. Whether you your small business deals with consumer products, food, healthcare, cannabis, or another sector, there are regulations that you need to know. Depending on your product or service and in what province and city you're operating your business, you need to meet regulations from all of these levels. That's get federal, provincial, municipal, industry association, and regulatory uh, bodies. Each level of government has a distinct but interconnecting role in protecting businesses. And in the chart, we can, we've just listed some examples of departments, acts, and regulations that correspond to the level of government. 
this is not a comprehensive list of all the businesses, but it's just a start to get you to understand what to expect. Depending on where you are in your business and product journey, you might want to review the Government of Canada website for a comprehensive list of regulations. And in addition, another excellent resource for permits and licensing is BizPal. There are different requirements for packaging and labeling in Canada based on the type of product that you're selling. So packaging and labeling reg regulations for consumer goods, textile, pharmacy drugs, and food products must meet minimum regulatory requirements. All labels in Canada must be bilingual with very few exceptions. This means text as well as any units relating to measurement, icons, badges, any displaying claims like a gluten-free must all be translated. And remember, the translation must be done in Canadian French for, uh, to be appropriate for Quebec sales. There are very specific labeling requirements for consumer goods uh, for human use. And as, oops, sorry. Other things you might be aware of when you're not making, uh, that you must be aware of are not making claims uh, that are against regulations. So uh, you might, think that you can say, you know, a claim like sugar free or low sugar, but there are a lot of regulations around that. And again, you know, we really encourage you to check out the government uh, links because these are so important. You don't want to have any, um, make any mistakes because again, this all comes back to having to repackage or to update all of your labeling requirements and make sure that you're and, and your trading partners will also want to make sure that, that you have um, accurately provided all of that information. It's exciting to think about getting your products onto store shelves or listed in digital sales channels, but at the same time, it requires an understanding of what your consumer or retail needs to know. As a small business owner, you need to know what product data is, what are images, what specifications are required, and what tools are available to help you navigate the process. If you're planning to sell your product on your own website or with a retailer or on a digital channel, you want to make sure you have all of the accurate information. Your customer wants to know specific details about your product before they buy it, and so you want to make sure you're consistently providing that to them. It can be overwhelming. Uh, we know this because we interact with small business subscribers on a regular basis, and they tell us how confusing and time-consuming product listing can be. They ask us questions like, what kind of images do I need? Do retailers want a different product information? Can I use my phone to capture product images? There are so many things that you need to be aware of, and there are lots of solutions to help support that. GS1 Canada offers our subscribers a tool called MyGeton, and basically it helps you through the entire product uh, information process. Manage MyGeton's helps you get it right from the beginning, because once you've got your GTIN, you can use the tool to add your product information, save the GTIN, and save all the product information in one place. Using the GTIN that you have, you can physically create and generate a barcode that is properly formatted and based on GS1 global standards. You can print the barcode, affix it to your products so that your trading partners can use it. The tool also provides a centralized location for managing your GTIN. So you've got a record of all of them in one central location, which enables you to easily and accurately maintain your usage capacity, and avoiding any duplication or unintentional reuse. In addition, the tool helps you with capacity tracking. How many GTINs have you assigned? How many do you still have left? And it reduces the risk of running out without warning. Many business processes require product data, high quality standardized images and complete bilingual unpack data. The type of product images and data required for business depends on where you are in your product journey and which sales you're planning on. Certain images are used for food service sales, catalogs, different images are used for retail shelf space management, flyers, in-store advertising, online sales platform, and accurate pharmaceutical dispensing. Basically, there are so many different places where you will be required to use your images. 
To capture these images inexpensively, many small business owners think they can take their own images on their smartphone or hire a graphic designer. While this is something you might want to do on your own, retailers and many online marketplaces require standardized, standardized images that can be seamlessly integrated into their systems to ensure consistent consumer experience on their platforms. High resolution images help create advertising and other promotional materials for both physical channels such as farmers markets or in-store or digital channels. Product images in standardized formats with consistent perspective and lighting provide flexibility for a broad range of marketing materials. GS1 Canada has a professional team of photographers and graphic designers that know how to capture and edit images using global standards. They have been doing this for over 30 years. And the point is when you are ready to trade and when you are in a place where you want to make sure that your product is represented to the way, to the, to the level of what your brand um, you're expecting is so, so important. And it's one of the things that, that our partners come back to us uh, because, you know, we're not going to get into it too deeply today, but as you get into, and we will touch on it in the next few slides, as you get into the depth of, of um, uh, being on shelf in a retail space, they will ask you specific measurements. How wide is your product? How tall is it? How deep is it? And some of them will want a planogram, which is the, the images in different angles. Um, they, these, these images, while they're useful for your retail partners, can be used across any digital channel that you have. So once you've got these images, you do own them. And really, managing content is very important. Uh, E-commerce is uh, a, con a secure storage tool where all your images, product data can be in one safe location. This means you can share it internally with your team, you can put it up on your website, or you can share it with trading partners. We also have online storage and distribution tools that allow for organizing, managing, and sharing food service content, shelf space content, which is the planogram, and advertising content. And you can also add enhanced uh, uh, assets such as lifestyle images, videos, and documents. So we have covered quite a lot of information and really the point of, of our conversation today is to give you the overall picture of what it takes to get the product to market and to let you know that we're here to help you. So really, number one, you want to make sure that your products are uniquely identified and can be traced back to your organization. We also know how important it is to make sure that you have the information you need to make the right decisions. We have education resources and training to help you get your products to market to meet those trading partner requirements um, at, when you're at the stage that you need to, to have that information. Also, good business requires great data and we really, really emphasize how important it is to make sure you get it right Make sure you're adding in the product data that is being required and requested across those channels uh, because it will help you and it will help you increase and improve uh, your sales. Again, just talked about picture-perfect products. Images are incredibly important. You want to make sure you're sharing professional standardized images that are accurate representations of your products. And really, we want you to be ready to trade. With accurate and up-to-date content, you can easily share these images across all your trading partner needs. And that concludes the formal part of our presentation. We hope you learned some new things and you'll help this uh, use this information to help you manage and grow your business. Now let's see if we have any questions. And I guess I will stop. Do you want me to stop sharing, uh, Adelaide? You're welcome to keep your slides up for okay. now. That's that's not a problem. Great. Um, thank you, Linda. As mentioned in the chat, everyone, please feel free to use the Q&A at the bottom banner of your screen to ask your questions for Linda and Ellen here today. Uh, I'll get started with one that did come in through our registration asking, a GS1 barcode that I'm supposed to own has been used by another company for their product. What recourse options do I have? Linda, did you want me to give it a stab? Sure. Yeah. Um, 
Firstly, just, just to clarify, uh, nobody owns the barcode. Do you have a license um, to use that barcode? It used to be before 1997, you used to buy the barcode, it used to belong to you. If somebody else is using your licensed barcode, you should report that in uh, to us, and we could do some research as to why. Uh, but that technically is uh, is is fraudulent to a certain extent. Uh, if that barcode or that GTIN is associated to your organization under our licensing agreement, it is uh, totally your propriety to use for the. Um, endless time of that product being in the market. Wonderful. Thank you, Alain. And another question that came in through the registration is a two-parter asking uh, related to UPC and barcoding. They're interested in wondering if coding is different for the United States. And the second part is asking if barcoding for containers is required. First, for the U.S., um, the uh, GTIN, if um, licensed through GS1, either Canada or US, is able to be used internationally. There are different regulations in the states. FDA, for example, Food and Drug uh, Association, they uh, manage all the regulatory aspects, especially in the food industry. But that barcode, uh, if uh, and that G, if it's licensed either in Canada or the US, is usable in both countries. And can you repeat that second part of the question? Absolutely. The second part was asking if barcoding is required for containers. It is if uh, you're bringing it in overseas, either through a distribution network or a broker network, mm -hmm. they may want to have that container identified. It is a different digit, a different barcode that's added on there. Uh, and that's accessible through uh, GS1 as well. So just to break that down a little bit, you start with the actual product. It could go into a case. It could go onto a pallet, which could be identified. And the entire container could be identified with a barcode, if need be, by the manufacturer and or the recipient party in a different country or within the same country. Thank you. And I see a question has popped up here in the chat. I believe that's related to subscriptions described a few slides ago, asking, I may have set up two accounts in error, but I have not paid yet. Do I just pay with the account that is correct? And what happens to the other account since I will not be using it? Um, you should probably ensure to get back in touch with us at our info at center or our call center, just to make sure that you are keeping the correct account. Uh, so that your other account could be uh, canceled or terminated. Otherwise, you might be billed for the two accounts. So very important to select the account that you wish to keep and just convey that back to us so we can set you all up. Thank you again. Those are all the questions I'm seeing at the moment, but I'd like to give it 30 seconds just in case anyone else is typing a question. And, and I, I think um, I just wanted to, to add in, um, you know, at any time, and I, I will share my, my contact info, if at any time there are questions after, please don't hesitate to follow up with us. We know there are a lot of things that you need to know in order to get your product uh, to market. There are a lot of different steps and stages. And really, today was really to hopefully give everyone an overview of what it is that we broadly that we need to know, but if there are more specific questions and one of the, the questions around um, packaging and where you need to put an, a, a barcode, whether it's on the packaging or it's on the, um, the, the shipping containers comes up a lot. And it's, uh, again, it's an opportunity for us to have a deeper conversation uh, if you need a little more help learning uh, or identifying what the difference is because the barcodes are generated uh, from your GTIN and they're connected to your GTIN and so we can we can help with that as well. Thanks Linda. Question just popped up here in the chat asking at what point is ECC net and ProSync needed? <laughs> Essentially as early as you can get on 
Uh, the reason being, the registry basically keeps all your information, content identifiers, Linda touched base on it, on how important it is to have your content and what we call attributes. Attributes are all the details associated with your product. The registry basically keeps all that information within and is accessible by all the trading partners amongst GS1 Canada. So as soon as you have a product and you are able um, to identify everything associated with it, it's final, it's ready to go to market, you've assigned the barcode, you've assigned the GEET number, we strongly encourage for you to go into ProSync and upload all that information in there. That is the tool you're going to use to get the information in, and then you have the ability to publish, what we call publish, to all your trading partners, either your immediate trading partners or to all available trading partners within that network. That's the power of the registry and the ability for all to be able to manage the same identical information. Another question popped in here for you. If we have individual sachets that are going to be packed into a 20 pack carton, do we need two barcodes, one for the sachet and one for the carton? If you are selling the carton as a 20 pack, you need a separate GTIN for that pack. If you're just sending the pack as a 20 piece individually sold, you don't need another barcode for, the, for that pack. The GTIN that you're using individually can be used for that case. If you want to produce a case only GTIN, you could do so through the managing of the GTIN uh, tool that we, we uh, prefaced before. If you're selling that 20 pack as a 20 pack, you need a separate GTIN. If you're only packaging to ship, you need a case code from the original GTIN for your individual. Great, they followed up with a comment saying it could be sold as both, perfect. Those are all the questions I'm seeing at the moment here. Everyone, if you do have questions, we have some time still if you do use the chat or the Q&A and we will ask your questions on your behalf. <clears throat> and another, while we're, while we're waiting, uh, if there are any other questions, I do, um, I, uh, I'll just flip to the last page. I do encourage, uh, you to go to our uh, GS1 Canada website. We have a, a, a page dedicated to small business tools and resources. You can find information about what we do, uh, our small business uh, podcast that we just launched. We also have a small business advisory group that you can sign up for. And there's a link on the webpage if you want to be a part of uh, future discussions around sort of needs and, and um, uh, updates. And we're also looking for great stories from our small business subscribers. So if you're a GS1 subscriber or you're in the process of becoming a subscriber, please uh, please go to the page and, and uh, register because our, our team is always looking for great stories that we can profile um, on, our, on our website and through our social channels. And again, we have more information about the other processes we have deeper dive into regulations and digital sales channels and you know what types of information our trading partners are looking for. So again, we encourage you to, uh, to check out the website, but also please don't hesitate to reach out if you've got any other specific questions. We'll do our best to help find those answers for you. That's wonderful. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, you can reach out directly to Linda, of course, through this, but um, Adelaide and I are also around if you happen to lose the address or whatever, you can reach out to either one of us and we'll help. Uh, ha we're happy to help connect too. I'm um, just going to check. I think Adelaide's been great at dropping some links in, but there are no more questions uh, for right now anyway. So I think we can wrap a little bit early. 
Um, just want to say a great big thank you uh, to Linda and LA. Uh, if anyone on the call here wants to be connected, like Linda mentioned, LA mentioned, there's an info at email address. There's also Linda's, um, but you can connect with uh, Adelaide and I. We can certainly help. Uh, the next Toolkit Tuesday will be on May 16th. Uh, so mark your calendars now. We have Retta Demu from uh, Senior Outreach Partnership Officer at Explore IP who will be um, talking to us all about the uh, importance of intellectual property in your business. And Retta is from the Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada or what we uh, usually short form to ISED. Uh, before you all disappear, Adelaide will post a uh, feedback form link in the chat, so please click on it, uh, share your thoughts with us on this session, <laughs> this session, and of course, uh, let us know if you have any suggestions for future Toolkit Tuesdays. Um, you know, if there's a topic you would like us to present on, uh, something you've been wanting to learn about or know about, um, let us know, and uh, we'll we'll try to set that up for our for you in the future. Uh, feel free to follow us on social media and you can post about your experience here today or um, any day that you join uh, any one of our webinars or events. We love uh, seeing things happen out in uh, digital media land. Uh, anyway, uh, feedback form, um, please fill it out. Uh, sincere thank you to Linda and Elay, to SLEO interpreters Samantha and Jeanette, uh, of course, to all of our sponsors and to Adelaide for being awesome and to all of you. Um, thank you so much for being here today. I wish you a wonderful afternoon and I hope you all come back again soon. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Take care. Thank you.